Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create smooth Boolean unions. So for intersecting solid objects, we get smooth transitions. Let's create this setup in a new scene and make sure we have at least two objects intersecting. I will use two boxes. The one we give nine divisions along each axis and another box we will give half its size and move it to the side and to the top by half units. I'll give it five divisions along each axis and now we'll merge both boxes and subdivide them twice to get more definition and smoothness. As planned both objects are now intersecting and we are going to use boolean union to remove intersecting parts. On top of that, I want to output the edges along the intersection. So let's output AB seams. And we can look at that edge group in the group viewer. So you should see a red line running all along the intersection. I want to promote this edge group to points. So let's use a group promote from edges to points and the point group I will call abseams underscore points. In case we might need it, I can keep the original group. And now I would like to measure the distance along the surface towards those touching points. Let's use the distance along geometry node for that and it's expecting our point group already. It's outputting a distance attribute which I want to rename to dist underscore srf for surface. We can use that inside a clip node as a clipping attribute and play with the distance threshold or distance parameter. You can see the Boundary could be a bit smoother, so let's go back to the distance along geometry node and change its metric to heat geodesic. That way we now have a smooth cut and again the distance of the clip node can change the gap size. Let's make sure to keep both sides of the cut and output primitive groups, the one below or rather above I will call solid and the one below I will call transition. You can also inspect that by switching the group viewer to primitives so that way we can tell which is which. I want to remesh the transition part to make it smoother so let's put it inside the group field use a few more iterations and we can reduce the target edge size to 0.02. With a lot of smoothing we already get a smooth transition which might do the job in many cases. If you need more smoothness however I would advise to detach the geometry. You can see the difference by enabling the display 3D island boundaries option and when you toggle this on and off you will see the blue edge contour that is indicating that both geometries are now split apart. Luckily on both sides there will be matching points so we can later on still fuse them. So let's split off the solid part by setting the split node primitive group to solid. And before we do that, we should create another group for the boundary points. So I will call the group boundary, switch the group type to points, disable the base group option and enable the edges group Unshared edges is what we need. So these points on these unshared edges, we can use after the split node its second output will hold the transition zone, which we are going to smooth even further by using an attribute fill node. 
let's keep the boundary group intact so these points are pinned down and smooth the position of each point using capital P. Let's set the minimum edge length to 1 and this should be the smoothest transition we can create before merging both geometry streams again. Now the fuse node will make sure overlapping points on the boundaries are being fused so we can set the boundary group here and instead of increasing the snap distance which we can keep at 10 we will also use the closest target point which just makes sure those immediate finding points will be fused together. Let's see how this reacts in a more complex scenario. So we'll also put in a torus into the merge and you can see it can also handle complex intersections of three or potentially more objects. I'll orient the torus to the z-axis and move it up by 0.5 units. If you're having trouble with fusing, you can also look into the option of matching. So you could use a connectivity and then have the, the matching uh, a bit more done in a more clever way than we do at the moment. I'll disable it for now, but just so you know, there is ways of matching equal or unequal sides. More interestingly, we can also manipulate the distance measurement. So after the heat equation that created the dist underscore SRF attribute for our cutting, we can use a float noise and add to it. So we would put in dist underscore SRF. The operation is already set to add and when we use a negative value or switch the operation to subtract, we are now able to change the cutting. You can see this is quite dramatic at first. Let me just show you the entire effect. But if you reduce the amplitude of the noise to let's say 0.2 and reduce the element size to 0.15, you see we get some kind of slime effect. On top of that, we can give it a bit more volume. So after the attribute fill, we can measure one more time the distance towards the boundary using another heat node. In this case, it's called heat geodesic. It does exactly the same. We measure to the boundary. So let's call this dist underscore boundary. and use an attribute remap to remap the dist boundary to a disp for displacement. I'll call it displace. I'll use the input max up to 0.1 and start off with a ramp called hill. Remove the last point so we have a smooth entry here. The last node to do this will be the soft peak node, which is accepting an attribute. In our case, the displace. And I'll use a, an amount of 0.05 to move these out, maybe 0.75 even. Back to the remap, we can dial this in. And in case you find this too steep or the stretching too strong, we could also remesh this one more time. I'll reduce my target size to 0.02 again and give it five iterations. So that will be effect. And we can then play with this some more, smooth the heat equation 
increase the distance, play with the ramp, maybe a uh, B spline, excuse me, a yeah, B spline interpolation does a better job until it starts to look like slime. And again, the entire gap size is driven by the first clip node here. Thank you for watching.